While 60% layout keyboards are becoming more common, companies are trying to come up with ways to separate their offerings for consumers. Building off the 4000 Hz polling rate on their flagship K100 that we checked out recently, the brand new Corsair K65 RGB Mini can operate at a ridiculous 8000 Hz polling rate. With the solid build, Cherry MX switches, and a standard bottom row, it's sure to be a good choice for those looking for a compact keyboard. Coming in at $110, let's take a closer look at the Corsair K65 RGB Mini. Thanks for watching 9to5toys! Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys, and first off, let's take a look at getting the K65 RGB Mini out of the box. With pretty standard packaging, the K65 RGB Mini does come with a few accessories. Of course, we have the detachable USB Type-C cable that will plug into the middle of the keyboard. And while we do have a more decorative spacebar that is installed initially on the board, it does come with a more standard kind of blacked out style, as well as a stylized escape key and a keycap puller. Taking a look at the overall design of the keyboard, it's pretty standard for a 60% layout. As you can see along the edge, these sides are raised a little bit so you can't see the switches uh, underneath the keycaps. And there are a couple of nice little details along the side that say like the model number of the keyboard. One interesting thing on here, on the bottom, uh, you can see that there aren't any adjustable risers. Usually most keyboards have, you know, a couple stages of adjustable risers, but Corsair decided to keep this a very simple design. I mean, it looks great and solid, and they just have it set at a single grade. There's no adjustability there. But for me personally, uh, I still found it to be plenty comfortable in my usage, so I didn't have any issues with there not being any adjustability there. Along with that simple design, the K65 RGB Mini also feels really well built. Um, the sides coming up, you know, make it just seem a little bit more solid. It has some decent weight to it. It's not the heaviest. Uh, it's also not the lightest either. What's interesting, one of the choices, um, I mean, RGB is in the name of this keyboard and it does have some pretty brilliant lighting, as you can see when you're looking up above. We'll get into that a little bit more. Um, but from like these sides and front, because of those raised sides, uh, you don't get as much RGB around the perimeter. Uh, you can see like my drop alt back here. Uh, you can clearly see the um, rainbow going right there, but that's something that you can't see thanks to those higher sides and the lack of any sort of lighting on the perimeter. Corsair is also keeping it simple and isn't really breaking the mold with the 60% layout of the K65 RGB Mini. Secondary functions are printed on the front of the keycaps and make it really easy to find the navigation keys that are lost with that smaller 60% layout. So with that standard bottom row, the function key is a third key in and arrow keys are up here in the middle. Uh, one interesting thing is it does have mouse control as well with that function key. So you can do everything from move your mouse uh, up, down, left, and right to do mouse one and mouse two clicks. So all the functionality that you may need is built in there. Uh, with that function button. So one of the major features of this thing is it's, uh, I think, the fastest keyboard available with that up to 8,000 hertz polling rate. This polling rate just really means how often the keyboard is checking for inputs. So with a faster rate, the keyboard should be able to detect inputs faster than slower keyboards with like a thousand hertz. And while I don't really think that most people will notice, uh, competitive players who do want to make sure that they have the best performing hardware might benefit from this newer tech. When 8000 Hz is selected within the Corsair IQ software, a little dialog box pops up that says this requires additional processing power and should only be used with higher end machines. I didn't notice it taking a toll on my Ryzen 7 3700X, but it definitely should be something to keep in mind if you are on a more dated machine. For switches, uh, Corsair is keeping it really simple and going with the well-known standard with Cherry MX switches on here. Uh, I believe they have three variants available. They are all linear. And the ones we have on here are their speed RGB switches. Likewise, the stabilizers feel good and sound good. Uh, there's no, you know, like crazy rattling or pinging in there or anything. But when you do press the keys a little bit more aggressively, there is kind of a uh, resonating metallic sound kind of throughout the whole keyboard. And so here we'll do a sound test so you can hear how that sounds.
So overall, I think it uh, types really well and sounds pretty good too, but if you are a little bit more uh, aggressive with your typing, uh, there is a little bit of resonating metallic sound in there. PBT double shot keycaps with a little bit of texture help to make the keyboard a little bit more durable and also help to reduce any sort of like glossy uh, fingerprints on the keycaps as well. Uh, I also think that the font is pretty subtle. You know, it's nothing outlandish that really stands out. And so I think that's really sharp and really works with the overall design of the keyboard. There's a lot of onboard customizability within the K65 RGB Mini. Uh, you can obviously cycle through all of the different uh, preset RGB designs on here. You can also adjust the speed and the brightness just with hotkeys on the keyboard. Um, but with the IQ software, you can still store up to 50 different profiles depending on the complexity of those profiles. But of course, all that is a lot easier to control when you do hook it up to a computer and use it with Corsair's IQ software to adjust all that lighting. And that's where you can set preferences for your computer, but you can also save them to the keyboard itself with the hardware lighting so that uh, you don't need to have it connected to the IQ software to cycle through different profiles. Also within IQ is where you will change and enable the different polling rates. You can go all the way up to that 8,000 Hertz, or if you just want to go down to 4,000 Hertz, uh, you can adjust all that within the IQ software. So with all those things together, uh, the Corsair K65 RGB Mini performs and feels great in my experience. I love small form factor keyboards for gaming. Having a little more room at my desk for big mouse sweeps when playing FPS games is always a plus for me. That being said, I do often use arrow keys when I am working, uh, so something like a 65% like the Drop Alt really has been my go-to. That's kind of like my standard keyboard that I use for most things. But that 8000 Hz polling rate, you know, that's something crazy and, you know, really pushing the performance of these small form factor keyboards. So uh, it's neat to see that Corsair is coming up with that technology. So overall, uh, I think Corsair has provided another really great uh, small form factor keyboard. There are plenty of beautiful RGB color options built in, the build quality seems solid, and the typing experience is satisfying as well. It's interesting that there aren't any adjustable feet, but I found the angle to be plenty comfortable and is poised to be the fastest keyboard thanks to that 8000 Hz polling rate, which might make a difference for really competitive players. And that'll wrap it up for our review of the Corsair K65 RGB Mini. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.